Hello and welcome to Alliance Live, the information and learning portal which brings you examples of innovative and integrated working taking place across Scotland within health and social care. In today's episode, we are joined by Rona Sweeting, the creator and admin of the Facebook group Southside Self-Isolation Supporters, a group which has brought together the community of Glasgow's Southside to support one another in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Good morning and welcome, Rona. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Georgina. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. So first of all, could I ask you a little bit about what inspired you to create this group and um, a little bit more about it? Absolutely. Um, in, uh, in my area of the South Side, um, we've always had a, a very strong community um, with, uh, with a, a lot of, of, of helpful individuals therein. Um, and when this situation first began to emerge, um, being in a, a non-risk category myself, I decided to ask if anybody was in the community was, was looking for a little bit of help or support. Um, well, very quickly that, uh, that blew up. Um, we created something of a, a, a rushed Facebook page to respond, um, gathered a team of individuals who could help out, and within less than a week, we had more than 7,000 members. Oh, wow. So you've really expanded recently. And, Absolutely. Uh, so you've said you've got 7,000 members. What has the response from the community been like? The response has been astonishing. Um, we have looked for a, a number of, of different areas for support. So, for example, we have a, a bank of general volunteers who are helping with day to day tasks. Um, delivering shopping, collecting prescriptions. We also have a bank of skilled volunteers who have been helping us to manage and maintain the group. So, for example, we have content creators who work on creating blogs and animations for our website. Uh, we have web creators, we have um, data managers and administrators who are running dynamic databases of volunteers. And more than that, within the Facebook group as a whole, um, we've created what we, we think of as a, a, almost a community within a community. Um, so people use it very much for support as a meeting place. Um, people post free yoga events, ideas for homeschooling kids, um, you know, uh, nice pictures that have been drawn. So it's, it's become a, an absolute hub of support uh, in a number of different ways. Oh, that sounds wonderful. So you've got these, um, these volunteers, and like you say, you've created uh, this community within a community. Um, what other sort of actions have you seen taking place because of the group? Um, what we've also seen, and from, I, I, would, I would say this is probably more from a group management point of view, um, we have been um, welcomed by the, the, the third sector and by charitable organisations in terms of supporting us. Um, the, the, the background of most of the, the, the team within the, the group itself is private sector. I myself am a, a, a project manager in renewable energy in my, my day to day life. Um, so while we have certain skills, um, we've been looking for support and advice from, as I say, the, the third sector and from charitable organisations. And we have found um, just enormously helpful conversations cropping up around those um, offers of support and advice um, and, and learning from, from both sides. Oh, that's so interesting. So beyond working with sort of third sector organisations and using your own uh, private sector skills, what other advice would you give to people who are looking to establish their own sort of group like this? Define your remit early on mm -hmm. um, and I would say very much don't overtax yourself. Um, there are, th th this is an unprecedented situation, we know that. Um, very few of us alive will ever have faced anything like this before. Um, and understandably, a lot of people want to get involved and, and, and want to help. Um, but, you know, trying to, trying to coordinate all these efforts is, is as we're, we're seeing, you know, even for the NHS, um, is a, is a, a, a difficult and time-consuming exercise. Um, certainly forming a team is a great way of doing things. So as I say, for example, we have subject matter experts in uh, data management and administration. Um, we have this, uh, we've built this team 
who can support and network with each other so that it's not not all the work is on one individual shoulders um, I'd say very much you know manage your workload um, my my take on it and again this is this is from my own experience is I manage this almost like a commercial project so we have um, individuals deployed in certain areas uh, they're very aware of their remit and then we have a conversation um, mm -hmm. around based around that and on the activities that we're undertaking mm -hmm. I think at this stage in time particularly for individuals um, like myself you know who are not from the traditional volunteer community who perhaps don't have that experience it would be very easy to become very overwhelmed very quickly um, but the help and support and the expert advice is out there um, and, and, and managing those expectations and managing that remit I think is an important way to go about things. Oh, thank you so much for that advice and so at the moment the group I guess is relatively young but where would you like to see this go in the future how would you like it to develop? A lot of the feedback that we've had both from volunteers and from members of the community is that they have felt empowered by its very existence. Um, I hope that not too far in the immediate future, the, uh, the immediate need for the group, um, its, its raison d'etre will no longer exist, hopefully. Um, but what I would like to see from a sustainable point of view is that it's carried on and over. A lot of the, the, the support that we're offering isn't just collecting shopping for elderly people or those who are ill. It's providing a platform to support the, the, the mental health and psychological well-being of the community. And from that point of view, I would like to see that continue. Um, people feel that they, they have a platform where they can connect um, with others in a similar situation. Um, going back to the, 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 the idea of, of establishing this, this element of community, um, one of the areas that we've driven is the creation of street champions. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, taking the group out on almost a micro level so we have identified individuals literally at street level um, and given them tools and resources to support them. Now, they, all they may do is perhaps have a couple of numbers for people in the close next door to them. And it might just be a case of a quick WhatsApp check once a day uh, to make sure that everybody's OK. But if we can continue that level of support and, and empowerment going forward, um, that, that would be my ideal scenario. I mean, that sounds wonderful, and I really hope that is the way that it progresses. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rona, and taking the time to speak to us. I really enjoyed hearing about this. It has been wonderful seeing how positively the Glasgow Southside has responded through this group to the COVID-19 pandemic and has helped to support people during this difficult time. And also thank you to our viewers. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have, and I hope it's provided some interesting and useful information. Alliance Live will continue to release interviews, webinars and podcasts both on and off the topic of COVID-19. More information regarding these and the wider work of the Alliance can be found on our website at www.alliance-scotland.org.uk or follow us on Twitter at Alliance Scott. Have a wonderful day.